constellation Orion, there's a segment of Google Sky's all sky mosaic, which is completely missing. There's nothing there, just a black box. Are they hiding something behind that black box? Are they covering something up? We're going to take a look in greater depth and detail than ever before and find out. We're going to take a look at the actual missing photograph and compare it to a more recent photograph taken of the same section of sky and see if anything has changed, if anything has moved, is anything being covered up there. It's actually quite easy to find the missing photograph. The photographs that you see that comprise Google Sky's All Sky Survey are from the Digitized Sky Survey, DSS. As its name implies, the Digitized Sky Survey is a digital scan of photographic film plates taken decades ago. The film plates themselves were actually monochromatic, but each was sensitive to a specific region of the visible or infrared spectrum. And by combining multiple plates, you can create color images, which is what Google did to create their all sky mosaic. I downloaded the plates that correspond to these coordinates and created my own color image, which I overlaid here onto Google Sky. You can see it's a match for the background stars around the missing section and includes the missing section. So there it is, the actual missing photograph that's missing from Google Sky. The processing I did on the DSS scans to create the image you see here results in a higher quality image than what you see on Google Sky. Google Sky is extremely compressed for optimum streaming over the web so that you can view the entire sky live very quickly. But the processing I did is higher quality and higher resolution. Now, as you might recall, back in November, I actually took pictures of the missing section of Google Sky with my own telescope and webcast it on this channel. I can now overlay the pictures I took back in November with the picture from DSS to see if anything's changed. Are they covering anything up? Is anything moving? First of all, here's my image overlaid back on top of Google Sky. You can see the surrounding stars are a match, and I completely cover the missing section with my images. Now I'll fade my image back on top of the missing image from Google Sky taken from DSS. You can see that the stars are once again a match, so we're definitely photographing the right region of space here. But the question is, did anything change? Is anything missing from my image? Well, let me fade it back again and watch carefully on the left-hand side near the top. You can actually see a blue object appears in the original missing photograph, which is not present in the images I took in November. The anomaly is actually specific to the blue sensitive monochromatic film plate, which I crossfade to here. Here's the specific section of the blue film plate where the anomaly occurs. You'd see it there in the top left. It only occurs on this particular film plate, not the other two that were taken of these same coordinates. So when exactly was this picture taken? Well, turns out it was taken in December 1983. More specifically, it was taken exactly one day prior to the publication of an infamous article in the Washington Post about a mysterious body detected in space by the IRAS telescope. So is that it? Is that what they were covering up? Well, we don't know that yet. Because although we got these images from DSS, DSS is not even the original source of the images, certainly not Google. The images are actually photographic film plates that were taken decades ago. Digital scans were made, but the digital scans are not the original copy of the photo, and they can have artifacts and anomalies that were not actually present in the actual photograph. It could be dust and dirt on the scanner. It could be a strange reflection of light that occurred during the scan. It could be just about anything. To know for sure whether or not it's a real physical object in space was actually captured in the original photograph, you actually have to look at the original photograph. You need to keep in mind that the original film plates were huge, and what we're looking at is only a tiny fraction of that. The green boxes you see in this picture represent one square degree of sky, the maximum you can call it from DSS at a time. And the gray-black grid represents the entire plate. And what we're looking at is just a tiny speck within that green box. In terms of physical space on the original negative, you're talking about an anomaly which only takes up a tiny, tiny speck. A small piece of dirt or dust could easily be just as large. Then again, it could be a real body in space, and Google Sky could be covering it up. The only way to know for sure is to look at an original copy of the film negatives that were taken. You can actually do that. There are a few university libraries throughout the country that host an original copy of the film negatives. I flew to the University of Michigan last month and took a look at an original negative of this very picture, the missing section of Google Sky, the blue sensitive film plate. I didn't have a light box to work with, so I may do the best I had, which was LCD flat panels around, and use that as a pseudo light box to illuminate the negative from behind. Negatives are stored in laminated plastic transparencies. They're not going to let you take them home with you, but if you call them up, you can 
take a look at them in the library and analyze them however you like. You can see that the, the photographs are actually negatives. The stars are black spots in the picture. And that's because it is a photographic film negative. You have to invert the colors of the picture to make it a photographic positive. Here's the photograph I took of the missing section of Google Sky from the actual negative. You can see a grid work pattern all over the image. As I said, I didn't have a light box available, so I made best with what I had on hand, which were LCD flat panel computer screens. I pulled up a flat white image on the computer screen and put the negative in front of the computer screen in order to illuminate it from behind. I then inverted the colors and overlaid it back on top of Google Sky. And here's what you see. As my picture of the negative fades in, you can see that the anomaly in the top left fades out. It's not there in the original negative. So therefore, it really is just a scanning artifact. Sorry to tell you, but Google Sky is not actually hiding anything. Although there is something in the DSS images, it's only in the DSS scan of the images. If you go to the actual photographic film negatives, like I did at the University of Michigan, you find out there's nothing there. That concludes this Google Sky mystery. Next time we'll take a look at something which actually is in the photographic film negatives and see if we can figure out an explanation for what it is.